Hey gang, and welcome back. Just a reminder, you can now use the promo code MTGMUDSTA, all caps, at FlipSideGaming.com. You'll get 10% off orders over $10 and help with the channel at the same time. They said it couldn't be done, and yet here we are. This is another EDH gameplay video just for your viewing pleasure. This week, I am rocking my Doretti deck, and I keep a hand with Wheel of Fortune, Quicksmith Genius, Burnished Heart, Slowbad Goblin Tinkerer, Toper Orb, Mountain, and Arcane Lighthouse. Sean is on his Nizan deck and keeps a hand with Sword of the Animist, Cross and Verge, Plains, Canopy Vista, Wasteland, Selesnya Signet, and Brass Squire. Trevor is taking his Nickel Bolas deck out, and it's the first time it's been on camera, and he keeps a hand with Hero's Downfall, Ponder, Reflecting Pool, Dissipate, Sunken Hollow, Steam Vents, and Chromatic Lantern. Mike is playing his Thromach deck and keeps a hand with Stomping Ground, Command Tower, Skull Clamp, Mountain, Forest, and Nisa, Voice of Zendikar. I win the die roll and start us off. For the first turn of the game, I play an Arcane Lighthouse and I pass my turn. Sean plays a tapped Cross and Verge and passes. Mike follows Sean's example and drops a Stomping Ground tapped rather than taking two. Trevor drops a Steam Vent, taking two, and casts Ponder. He rearranges the top three cards he drew and draws before passing. I play a Mountain and I cast Toper Orb before passing. Sean plays a Plains and casts Selesnya Signet. Mike plays a Command Tower and casts Skull Clamp before passing. Trevor plays a Tap Sunken Hollow as he has no basics and passes. I seem to be lacking in lands, so I cast Grim Monolith and tap the Monolith to cast Unstable Obelisk before passing. Sean plays a Plains and cracks the Crows and Verge to find a Plains and a Forest card. In the meantime though, as he's a considerate fellow, Sean casts Soaring, which he taps to cast Sword of the Animist and passes. Mike plays a Forest for his turn and casts Nisa of Voice of Zendikar. He upticks his Planewalker to create a Broccoli and passes. Trevor plays a Reflecting Pool and casts Chromatic Lantern before passing turn. I still can't find a land, so I cast Burnished Heart and pass. Sean plays an untapped Canopy Vista as he has two basics on the field and casts Brass Squire. He then gears up the Squire and passes turn. Mike plays an Exotic Orchard for his land for turn and casts a Magic Spell. Mike then Skull Clamps his plant, drawing two, and upticks Nisa once more to make another plant. Trevor also seems to be struggling for lands, and he casts a Demir Signet before passing to me. I do my best impression of an almost mannerless dredge at this point, playing no lands and passing to Sean. Sean plays Blighted Woodlands and moves to cast Nazan. Sean then moves to combat, swinging the Squire at me, and Nazan triggers letting him tap my heart, which sounds sadder than it was meant to. Sean grabs a basic, and I sacrifice the heart as he's not even a good blocker anymore to find two mountains. Mike plays a forest and once again clamps the plant token. He then upticks Nisa once more to create a plant, and discards down to 7 at the end of turn. Trevor also has something to do at the end of turn, and uses Hero's Downfall to take out Nisa. Trevor casts Steam Augury during his main phase, desperate for some lands. He unfortunately hits 0 lands, and 3 of the cards cost 6 or more. I choose to give him the pile with Nickel Bolas Planeswalker and Mystical Tutor. I draw and play a Mountain for my turn, and cast Commander Seer before trying to resolve a Wheel of Fortune. Trevor casts Mystical Tutor, and Mike takes the opportunity to cross and grip my Tober Orb because he's a big meanie. Trevor puts Stig Through Time on top, and we all draw 7. Sean casts Scavenging Ooze in his main phase, and taps Soul Ring to cast Lightning Greaves. Sean then casts Imposing Sovereign, and moves to combat. Sean swings the Squire at Mike, and taps the plant with Nizan's trigger to deal 2 damage and find himself a basic. Mike plays his own copy of Reflecting Pool, and drops Perforos, making me super happy that my Tober Orb is gone. Trevor starts off his turn by delving away a bunch of cards to cast Dig Through Time for two. Trevor picks his two and plays Darksteel Ingot and scries with Temple of Epiphany before passing turn. I drop a Mountain and cast Planar Bridge before passing to Sean. At the end of my turn, Sean exiles my Worm Coil Engine and Toper Orb and Trevor's Scourge of Alcus. This gives him two life and is scavenging used two plus one plus one counters. Sean plays a Buried Rune for turn and casts Bloodforge Battle Axe. He equips it onto the Brass Squire, who's more geared than some knights I've seen at this point. Sean then swings the Squire at me for 4 damage, and Sean gets to find a basic and gets a Battle Axe token. Sean then puts the copy onto Nazan and passes turn. Mike plays a Cinderglade and drops Siege Gang Commander. We all, and by that I mean Mike's opponents, take 8. Mike then clamps the last of his Broccoli to draw 2 and passes turn. Trevor casts Soul Ring during his first main phase and plays a Sunken Ruins for his land for turn. Trevor then casts Whisper Silk Cloak and passes. I play a Mountain for my turn and pass to Sean. Sean activates the Blighted Woodland to find two basics and reminds Mike that his creatures should be tapped. 
Sean plays a planes and casts Stalking Leonin, secretly writing Trevor's name. He moves to combat, swinging Nizan and the Brass Squire at Mike, and he does 11 damage, grabs a basic, and makes two more copies of the token axe. He moves the new tokens onto his opposing Sovereign and Stalking Leonin, and passes turn. Mike plays a forest and casts Panharmonicon. He then casts Goblin Rabble Master, and Sean finally puts a stop to Mike's shenanigans with a return to dust exiling the Perforos. We then remember to tap the Rabble Master, and Mike moves to combat, creating a tap goblin token that must attack. Having to swing with his remaining goblins, Mike swings the CGN Commander at me and the tokens at Trevor. I activate Planar Bridge before the end of Mike's Declare Attacker's step and grab a tapped Combustible Gear Hook. I choose Mike to decide whether I draw 3 or whether he potentially takes some damage, and Mike lets me draw 3. Trevor and I take some damage, and Mike equips one of the tokens with a clamp to draw 2 in his second main phase. Trevor casts Chaos Warp to shuffle away my Planar Bridge, and I shuffle with a chance of still revealing the bridge, but I don't and instead hit Codex Shredder. Not done with the end of Mike's turn, Trevor casts Epiphany at the Drown Yard, choosing Sean. Trevor reveals three lands and a signet, and Sean gives him the pile with the signet. On Trevor's upkeep, Sean strings together a staggering amount of axe puns, and moving to his main phase, Trevor casts Nickel Bolas, equipping the legendary Elder Dragon with the Whisper Silk Cloak. Trevor then plays a watery grave, and with nothing else, passes to me. I play a sequestered stash for my land for turn, and drop an unwinding clock which makes me wish I still had that planar bridge. I then cast Lodestone Golem to make more friends at the table, and Sean reminds me to tap it. I then mill myself for one, and swing the combustible gear hulk at Trevor, who had been saying he might attack me. This has now become a more or less self-fulfilling prophecy, as having now attacked Trevor, he is certain to attack me back. At the end of my turn, Sean eats my Solemn and Slowbad with his Ooze, and Trevor's Vandal Blast and Mike's Eternal Witness fall victim as well, and Sean gains 3 and his Ooze gets 3 counters. I get to untap my artifacts with Sean's untap step, and Sean pays 4 to cast Recollect, returning Return to Dust. Sean then casts the Instant in his main phase, targeting my Unwinding Clock and Trevor's Whisper Silk Cloak. Sean then moves to combat, and he swings Nazan and Stocky Leon in my way. Imposing Sovereign says hello to Mike, and Brass Squire goes to Trevor. Sean also gets to tap down my blocker, and Mike and Trevor take 4, while I, the lucky one, take 12. Sean gets 4 more token copies of the axe, and moves 3 of the copies onto everyone but the Brass Squire. Mike plays a forest and drops Pandemonium. He's glad he waited until after Bolas came out, and casts Eldritch Evolution, sacrificing the Rabble Master to go find Emrakul's Evangel. With the Panharmonicon out, this lets Pandemonium trigger twice from the Evangel, and Mike targets the Imposing Sovereign and my Lodestone Golem. Mike then passes turn. Trevor pays the bolus tax and draws for turn, playing a command tower in his main phase. Trevor then casts Is It Signet and casts Silence the Believers, targeting the stock in Leonin and paying the strive cost to exile the Brass Squire as well. Trevor realizes his days are numbered after that, and wanting to get the most value on his way out, swings bolus at me for 7. I'm forced to discard my hand on damage, and I'm forced to shuffle the Blightsteel Colossus I've had in my hand into my library. With nothing else, Trevor passes. At the end of turn, Sean exiles the Lodestone Golem and my Metalworker, gaining 2 life and 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters for his ooze. With Sean out of mana, I use the chance to sacrifice my Codex Shredder to return Scrap Mastery to my hand. I float 1 red mana with my Commander Sphere before sacrificing it to draw a card. I then play Ghost Quarter and activate Sequestered Stash's ability, sacrificing it to mill the top 5 and return an artifact to my hand. I hit a ton of lands but not much value, and I decide to cast Doretti instead, swapping my Grim Monolith for Rings of Bright Hearth. Hoping that my not casting Scrap Mastery has bought me some good karma with Sean, I pass turn. Sean casts Nylea during his first main phase and equips Nazan with 5 token axe copies. He moves to combat, and my karma clearly having not gotten me anywhere, swings the scavenging ooze at me, tapping my combustible gear hulk, and Nazan at Trevor, killing us both. Mike plays a mountain for his turn and casts Hissing Iguana. This triggers the Panharmonicon and Pandemonium, allowing Mike to deal 6 damage to Sean. Mike then taps Emrakul's Evangel, sacrificing the goblins and the Evangel itself to create 5 Eldrazi tokens with 3 power. This also gives Mike 5 triggers from the Hissing Iguanar, and he deals them to Sean. With the Eldrazi coming into play and triggering the Panharmonicon and the Pandemonium, Mike is able to do 30 damage to Sean and close out the game. So, I'm pretty sure the game would have gotten differently had I not been a complete doofus and avoided casting Scrap Mastery. Either Trevor or myself or possibly both of us could have lived, and Mike wouldn't have only had one target to focus on the rest of the game. Sean's Zadden deck does what it does best, and uses Bloodforge Battleaxe and Sword of the Animist early on to get some huge advantage. 
Nizan's triggered ability when an equipped creature attacks is very powerful and surprisingly relevant most of the time. And even with casting his commander and not getting to tutor for an artifact, Sean was still a big threat for most of the game. It's a shame Trevor's nickel bolus deck went a little bit slowly this game, and he wasn't really able to get into the game very much. He had some good spot removal, but a lot of his draw really didn't help him out very much, and he was always hitting his heavy drops. I mean, he cast almost four mass draw spells, and only one of them was able to get him some lands. Mike's Thurmok deck actually did stuff for most of the game this time, and it was a real treat to see. It's a shame he didn't really need to cast his commander, but with Panharmonicon and Pandemonium out, he was doing a lot of damage just with tokens coming into play. Thinking about it now, had I played the Scrap Mastery, Mike wouldn't have had the Panharmonicon, which means his Pandemoniums wouldn't have doubled. We'll just chalk this one up to another misplay on my part. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11am Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also find me on Twitter at MTGMudsta, at Facebook at Facebook.com slash MTGMudsta, or on Twitch at Twitch.tv slash MTGMudsta. This video is brought to you in part by support from my Patreons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below or in the About section. As always, thank you guys for watching and please be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe for more.